Hello, greetings. Now I'm a Viking and I love my axes. So let's talk for a few minutes about these two. Now in my hand, I have, first of all, give me a second as I put this round my neck. Don't worry, it's blunt. I have what I would class as a, a tree felling axe. Actually, I use this now and again in the past to chop down trees. It's not as sharp as it used to be, so it does need resharpening. But I'm sure you agree. Um, I made the handle, that's ash. Got a bit of a split in it actually. Just getting old and too dry, it happens. But still, it's very useful. And I could put some leather around that, and bound it together and make a better grip. What I also love about this axe is the fact that A, it's got a nice back hammer in case you need to use one. Because some days when you're splitting logs, you need to use two axes and having one with a good back hammer on it like this it's a great tool, you know. You could not nail them to a wall, but I don't recommend it. Use the right tool for the job. But the other thing I love about this axe is this hole, which I can just about get my little finger in. There you go. Um, whether it was there originally, I don't know. I don't know whether... I often ponder this about this axe. Whether it was intent to be put there in the first place, or whether... Somebody's bought an axe and thought to myself, well, I, I know, I need to hang it up. I'm going to drill a hole in it and have a big power drill to do it. Probably a pillar drill would do that better than a power drill, to be fair. I'd imagine using a handhold drill, but that would take forever. Pillar drill, you've got the weight, and as long as you drill sharp and you've got some lubricant, some lube, I never thought I'd say that word on the channel, uh, it will work fine. Again, a problem with this axe is this wooden wedge needs gluing back in and needs knocking out, getting some wood glue and knocking back in again so it's flush. And there's a slight gap at the back there, which I can't do much about really. And I also have another grip of leather here, so that when you're using it in battle you've got two leather grips that would be far more effective. Myself, I'm not quite strong enough to use it one-handed at the back of the handle. If I was going further up, yes, but even then it's still top heavy. But I do like it. Sure you agree. That's been de-rusted by myself in a vat of vinegar. And I think I made the handle about seven or eight years ago. So it's done alright so far. And of course with having a back hammer as I would call it, it's probably got a proper term for that but I, I can't remember it. You could also use it in the shield wall as well. If you've got a slung shield, then you can sling your shield around your hand and still have a bit of grip to grip the bottom of your axe. And then, of course, alternatively, without hitting the old camera, you can do it this way. Yeah. I'd probably say the balance point is about there. So it's quite heavy. As for markings, let's have a quick look here. Yeah. Uh, can't, can't see any. Often with makers, some of the blacksmiths that made things themselves didn't always put things on. And sometimes they get ground out. It's, it's a pity really. But it probably means it's got more rage than a more modern one in the sense of it being 20th century or even Victorian. So this is probably, you know, late Victorian I would say. In my mind, but it could be a little bit newer. I mean, it could be a World War II era one, and the marks have been ground out, but that happens. So let me put this down carefully without landing. That's another thing about big axes and wearing Viking shoes is that you don't get much protection if one of them lands on your foot. So always be careful. You can hear it rattling against the shaft of my Dane axe. There we go. So this is a Dane axe. As you know, you've seen lots of these on the cam on the channel. Not on the camera, on the channel. Oh, it's on camera right now, I can see it. Thank God, or the gods. Because I want better to do that. And you imagine one of these being really brought down with force. You, could, you, could, you can understand why they have a reputation of spitting a man in two or chopping a horse's head off in battle. And I can imagine that 
there'd be lots of dead horses at Hastings after these have been in contact with them. Again, very difficult to use in battle. I don't often use a day in axe in Viking reenactment. I prefer the spear. If we're going to carry a shafted weapon like this. But you don't have to do the classic figure of eight, which is a little bit difficult to do around here because I've got trees around me. And also, this Danax handle is just too slippy. But the idea is you come down, you go back up, you've got another swing, another one, but you've got to keep moving your arm positions. And that's the difficult bit. Really, it takes a lot of practice and having a go at home but most of the time you don't use it in that sense in reenactment because at the end of the day you're not going to be swinging it like that you're going to be using it more as a as a spear you know grab shields and run it against people you don't want to get this edge of the blade onto people too much it will hurt so you can you try to run it against the edge of the blade so this is why you see a lot of viking warriors who use Danaxes use it more as a spear but there is an alternative way of using it which is you get the Dane axe and you plonk it on the ground and you could cut move that a little bit you could use it in this method now this one's a little bit short for me could do with being another three inches higher or two inches but the, the idea is you're defending in that sense and of course you could raise it and then you've got the back of the handle as well but that's a better easy way to manage the Dane axe yes made for mild steel of course in the old days these will have a cutting edge which were made from a better quality steel and basically what they'll do they'll form a flat along here and chisel a channel and then they'll get the better steel and heat that up and heat that up and then kind of mar the two together by fire welding a better quality steel edge to it yes now this one's never been riveted onto the handle because i want to make a better handle for this it's just too straight for my liking i mean look at that this used to be a spear shaft I think it was like an eight foot one and it broke in half about this section and it split so I chopped it off I'd always save any bits of spare handles because you never know when you're going to want to use them so at the beginning we asked a question as I go and pick up the other axe of which of these two is best in Viking battle I don't know, I find it very difficult to decide actually. I'll probably choose the Dane axe, you know, because of the alternative ways I can use it. As this one's a little bit too heavy. But some people would choose this, I'd imagine. What are you going to choose? I may even create a pole, Dane axe or a felling axe. Yeah, definitely more of a felling axe. You'd imagine it chopping into a tree. Actually, I chopped a few trees down with this, so it's very good. But it was sharper. Oh, yes. Because that's a good way of testing your strength. Hold your weapons up. You don't need weight. You just need a Dane axe. Oh yes. To Odin. Or to Thor. Or Thunar. Or Odin. Or Woden. So if you like this video. I've not really planned it. I just talk on the cuff. Talk about what I know about. Sometimes, some days, like them, I'll stumble, stumble my words. I'm tired today. And I did plan to have a, a day out, but it didn't quite go to plan because there's no buses, or not many buses. So if you like what we talk about, give us an old subscribe, click on the old notif not notification bell, and um, leave us a comment. Goodbye. I'm going now. I might do a live stream after this. <laughs>